Good evening, everybody. How are you tonight? Well, as Melise said, uh, my name is Paul Engel, and I am the director of the Brockton Public Library. And uh, on behalf of the Library Board of Trustees, on behalf of the Library Foundation, and on behalf of the wonderful staff of the Brockton Public Library, I would like to personally welcome you to the Brockton Public Library. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Um, next up, uh, Mr. Billy Hogan is going to talk, and after that, was followed by, by Mr. Todd Petty. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming here tonight. Do you need the mic or you want? I want the walk around one, though. <laughs> you want to walk around with it? Yeah, yeah. yeah too tall. Thank you, people. They always put me behind the tall guys. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> um, thank you for coming. My name's William uh, Hogan, the Downtown Brock Museum. Yeah, Melissa and um, Paul asked me to do this maybe three, four months ago. Of course, you know, I didn't get started on it until last week, Tuesday or something like that. Um, Brockton um, history comes very easy to me anyway, so I kind of wing these things as I go. Um, when I was first asked, I, I thought this was, uh, I, I was very well aware that this was part of the Immigration Dialogue series. And it was uh, the main focus tonight is Rocky, uh, Rocco Francis Maccagiano, um, Rocky Marciano was Italian. Uh, my last name being Hogan, I thought that was a perfect fit. And, uh, but my mother's name is Vosi, so I am with that. And uh, she would be here tonight, but she's not feeling too well. Um, but anyway, thanks, thanks for coming. Um, we have a, I'm just going to kind of focus on the, uh, the, boss, the boxing aspect of this a little bit. The, uh, and Todd, Todd's dad um, grew up with Rocky, so we can get some more personal um, input from Todd on, uh, on Rocky and his family than I can, uh, than I can tell you. Um, I mean, we all know Rocky was the heavyweight champion of the world, undisputed, only, first and only undefeated champion. He knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott on September 23rd. Let's see if I got that right. September 23rd, 1952. Um, Jersey Joe Walcott was a great champion in his, in his uh, home right. And that punch right there changed history. Um, we don't have Marciano Stadium if he doesn't connect on that, uh, that punch right then and there. He did knock out Jersey Joe on, his, on the rematch in the first round. But he had a tough fight against Jersey Joe. And, uh, so that's, um, that's the boxing history, but I'm really not telling you too much about that. I mean, it, it, most of we, we, we know about that. Uh, Todd will focus on all the things that had to fall into place for Rocky to become the world champion. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking. I do want to recognize, um, because it's boxing, some of the, uh, the boxers that are here tonight, and some of them may be coming later, but we have some champions here. Put my glasses back on. And this is in no particular order, so don't get mad. I don't want to get the boxers mad. Um, they're good guys, but if they start fighting, there's not, nobody here that can stop them. <laughs> yeah, the referee, we have an announcer, but we don't have a referee. Um, Tony Petronelli, good friend of mine. Now, if he turns that inside out, guess what that means? <laughs> it's the truth. Now, uh, well, uh, Tony was a welterweight, the USA New England light. He's got super lightweight. Welterweight, Tony. Light, light welterweight. USA New England, and he also the North American Boxing Federation champion. Um, he had a. Uh, he, his, his record was 42 wins and only four losses. Um, very good. And, um, and we had a saying, it was, I let my hands do the talking. He doesn't say too much. But when his hands do the talking, he says a lot. Um, and we have, with, uh, I think most of you people are aware that Tony's father, Pat, was um, one of Marvin Hagler's trainers at the Petronelli Gym. Uh, Marvin had a pretty good career, uh, world middleweight champion of the world. Uh, we have two of them from Brockton. Um, and Tony's um, uncle Goody uh, owned the uh, Petronelli Brothers Athletic Club on uh, Petronelli Way. They have a street named after him. Uh, Tony has a street named after him. Tony DeMarco, who I'll get to in a little while, has a street named after him. And Rocky Marciano has a street named after him. And three of them, three, well, hopefully, uh, 
Everybody's here. Okay. And um, Robbie Sims was supposed to be here, but Rob might come right in the middle of everything if I know Rob. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about Robbie. Robbie was a great fighter, too. Um, I don't know where my buddy Tiger Moore is. Everybody know Tiger Moore? Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> Tiger's supposed to be here. There's another box. And also, sitting next to Tony is Tommy Martini. Tommy was 1960. <laughs> he was a Navy man, and, uh, and, um, which is a nice connection because Goody Petronelli was a uh, Navy veteran. Um, 1960 United States Navy Bantamweight Champion in uh, Morocco, Spain. Yep, very good. And uh, Eddie Nelson's here. I'm not sure what, it must have been a heavyweight. <laughs> 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 Eddie hit Luke before too, but I'm not going to go in. <laughs> and who else is here? Come, I'm expecting some, uh, some boxes later, and uh, I'm hoping they make it. Um, but we're very blessed to have Tony DeMarco here. Tony DeMarco. <laughs> well, we've been talking about Tony's career all, uh, all day long, I'll tell you. What a, what a story. He has the book. He has a book here. Um, he can sign it for you. Um, I have a couple of copies. I'm going to get another one tonight also. But uh, Tony, Tony was, um, he was actually fighting during uh, Rocky Marciano's reign as, as world champion. Tony was the world um, welterweight champion, undisputed welterweight champion. Um, we have a couple of names for him. One was the Boston Bomber. The other one was the Flaming, the Flaming Fury of Fleet Street. Tony used to sell out the Boston Garden when he fought there, which for boxing is unheard of. It's very hard to sell out a, uh, an arena that is the size of the old Boston Garden. When he fought, the place was packed. He had a couple of um, legendary bouts with Carmen Basilio. Uh, if you get the book, you can read about it a little bit. Tony won the championship on April 1st, 1955, with a TKO over Johnny Saxon. And um, he compiled a win of 58 wins, 12 losses, and one draw. We're talking about, um, uh, if, you, if you compare these people to, say, baseball players, uh, just to put it in perspective, when you talk about Rocky Marciano, you're talking about like Ted Williams. And when you're talking about Tony, you're talking about Kai Yastrzemski, yeah. or somebody of that. Um, Tony Petronelli, of course, Rico Petrocelli. We have to throw a <laughs> on in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so the uh, so we have a very rich history in, in Brockton and in the area. And that's about all I'm going to say because um, I can't wait to hear to see what Tony, Tony has to say. Oh, okay. 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 The list. The list put about, I don't know how many weeks into this, but we have a little present from the list. It's a Rocky Marciano shirt. My goal is to have everybody in the world wear these. I sell them at my store, $15. Come on down. Come on up. I'm not selling them here. I'm not that now. <laughs> This is the punch that you got up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A little prep work here, thank you. He's more polished than me. I did try to put a tie on in case anyone, anybody that knows me, they've never seen me in clothes, never mind. Never mind, I try to put a suit on. This don't, this don't fit. So, history's being made. <laughs> Good job by everyone. Wonderful. This is fantastic. What a, what a, what a great thing. I talked to Todd twice a year, maybe. We're, we're great friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you live. There's nothing better than emails and texting, right? Yeah. You're up, my friend. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome to the Brockton Public Library on this month's series of American Immigration Dialogue Brockton's most famous citizen. Rock Marciano, 
the son of Italian immigrants. On September 23rd, 2012, the tallest statue of an athlete was unveiled right here in Brockton, Massachusetts. The 22 foot, six inch statue was commissioned to be built by the late World Boxing Council President Jose Suleiman. Jose Suleiman was a native of Fall River and he wanted to honor and recognize the greatest heavyweight champion of them all, Brockton's own Rocky Marciano. But what led to the dedication of that statue? Let's go back 60 years from that dedication date, September 23rd, 1952. Rocky Marciano's record at that time, 42 wins, zero losses, and 37 of those wins, Tony, 37 of those 42 wins by knockout. Imagine that. Rocky is finally getting his shot at the title, which is the most coveted title in all of sports the boxing heavyweight champion of the world. And back then, Tony Petronelli, there was only one champion, right? And everyone knew who you were. Everyone knew. Rocky once said, and I quote, Rocky once said, there's nothing better than walking down the street knowing that you are the heavyweight champion of the world. The champ at that time was a gentleman by the name of Jersey Joe Walcott. He weighed 14 pounds more than Rocky did that fight. Rocky came in at 184 and Jersey Joe at 198. He was also taller than Rocky too. Rocky was a slight favorite going into that fight. But when it began, Jersey Joe gave Rocky all he could handle. The scheduled 15 round fight was about to begin. <laughs> the champ and Rocky moved around. Jersey Joe was a little smoother than Rocky. He was light on his feet. Rocky was more brute, wanted to get in and mix it up and start punching right away. Then, at one minute and three seconds of the first round, the unthinkable happened. Jersey Joe hit Rocky with a left. And for the first time in his career, Rocky was floored. He was on the canvas. Rocky said later on, and I quote, I was more upset with myself for having been knocked down than I was hurt. And that was the last time that Rocky Marciano would ever be knocked down. The round end, the men came out. They came out for rounds two, three, four. Imagine, if you will, the pounding that they've given one another round after round, round five. Round six, round seven, Jersey Joe Walcott was hitting Rocky with everything that he had. But Rocky kept fighting back. Rounds eight, rounds nine, rounds 10, rounds 11, they kept fighting one another. Neither one would give up. Rocky and Jersey Joe are starting to show signs of the 12 rounds of relentless punching on one, each, on one another. Both men swollen in the face came out for the 13th round. They moved back and forth. Jersey Joe Walcott was winning on all three fight cards, the referee's card and the two judges. 
Rocky was mathematically eliminated. The only way that he could win was if he knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott. And the only thing that Jersey Walcott had to do was one of several things. Either hold Rocky at an arm's length for three rounds and retain his heavyweight championship. Hope that Rocky doesn't come out for the 13th round or knock Rocky out. That's it. Sounds like a doable task? It would be, but Jersey Joe Walcott would be trying to do what 42 men before him were unable to do. You know what that was? Stop Rocky Marciano. And two gladiators came out for the 13th round. Jersey Joe was moving to the side a little bit. And he started backing up what looked like preparation to throw a right at Rocky. Joe's left was down and Rocky saw this very thin margin of light. And then boom, like a piston. That picture right there changed everything. Jersey Joe started to crumble. Rocky hit him with an insurance punch to the back of the head, and that was it. Jersey Joe was out for the count. The referee instructed Rocky to go to a neutral corner. The fight was over. Rocky's the new heavyweight champion of the world, and his Brockton trainer, Ali Colombo, ran into the ring, and he was the first person to touch Rocky Marciano as Rocky was the new champion. Now, at 43 seconds of the 13th round in Rocky's 43rd fight, he knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott. Tony Petronello. He was fighting today, he wouldn't have done it. It was only, only 12 round fights today. Imagine that. That fight were held today? Tony, good point. He wouldn't have won. There are no more 15 round fights. It's a good point, Tony. He would not have won. Rocky knocks out Jersey Joe Walcott. Everyone goes crazy. The city of Brockton breaks up in pandemonium. Main Street is filled with everyone. Everyone's happy, everyone's proud, especially the Italians. Not only here in Brockton, but the Italians over in Italy. You see, Rocky. Rocky's father was from a small town by the name of Ripatiatina. And this is a plate from the town of Ripatiatina that is given to an athletic winner each year after they have a, a small marathon type event. And they're very proud of the history of Rocky Marciano. And Rocky's mother was from a town by the name of San Bartolomeo in Galvo, Italy. They're over towards the Adriatic Sea, and Santa ba San Bartolomeo is beneath Ripatiatina. So those towns were ecstatic as well. Uh, let's see what they do here. Excuse me one second here. Thought I had this one. But how did this happen? How did Rocky Marciano become? the heavyweight champion of the world. What led Rock Marciano on the journey that brought him the championship on that great day in 1952? Well, we're going to tell you about it. Pierino Maccagiano was born on April 18, 1894, in Ripatiatina, Italy, a small town in the Abruzzi region of Italy towards the Adriatic Sea, if you look over from Rome. His father's name was Rocco. Pierino came to America in 1915 at the request of some friends of his by the name of Campanelli that lived in Braintree. So Rocco came over here and did, did some construction work 
for a while, little while before he joined the United States Marine Corps in 1917. After he joined the Marines, he was sent to France to fight in World War I. And while he was in France, he was injured by shrapnel that he carried in his body for the rest of his life, in his legs, in his midsection, all over his body. And also, he was a victim of a mustard gas attack that was used in World War I. And for the rest of his life, when he came back from the war, he always had that taste in his mouth, the mustard gas. And he, those of us who knew him, always remember that he had a piece of hard candy in his mouth at all times. And his uh, daughter Betty told me the other day that uh, he preferred butterscotch. Whenever he had an opportunity to have butterscotch, he'd, he'd have a butterscotch uh, lozenge in his mouth to get rid of that bad uh, taste from the mustard gas. Uh, later on, after the war, he came, back, he came to Brockton to be with relatives and started working in the shoe industry. Many years later, many years later, after Rocky was the heavyweight champ, Rocky's getting ready to defend his title. So he's at training camp, and there's a reporter came up to Rocky one day and said, Hey, Rob, do you mind if I ask your father a few questions? Rocky said, no, absolutely, go right over there, my father will be a happy to answer anything you ask me. So the reporter said to Mr. Marciano, Mr. Marciano, he said, Pierino, he said, what is the most proudest moment of your life? What is it that you're most proud of? Now me, I think that people probably say, gee, that punch wasn't so bad right there, or beating, uh, Roland Asazza when he was 37 and 0, that's not, that's not too bad either. I have six children, each one of those moments is proud. But you know what he told the reporter? He said, the day I get discharged from the Marine Corps, the colonel came up to me and he said, Private First Class Marcajano, you can be proud to call yourself an American. But back in those days, when an immigrant served in the military, upon discharge, you got American, you got automatic US citizenship. Can you imagine that? Of all the things that happened throughout his life, his son becoming champion, father of six children, a successful man, you know, working a humble life and here in here reward too in becoming an American citizen. It ties in beautifully with what this whole series is all about. Pierino died many years later from emphysema, which was directly linked to his exposure to the mustard gas in World War I. Now, Rocky's mother, Pasqualina Picciuto was born on January 6, 1901, in San Bartolomeo, Italy. Right here. This is where she's from, right here. And this is, as I said earlier, this is just south of Ripetiatina. Now, the two did not know one another in, when they were in Italy. The Picciuto's arrived in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in 1917, when Pasqualina was just 16 years old. Then tragedy struck the family. Pasquina had a brother named Nicholas who was riding his bike one day. He was hit by a truck and killed. Very, very sad day for their family. And Pasqualina gave Peter her son when he was born. She gave him Nicholas's name for his middle name in memory, to, in memory of him. But Peter Nicholas Marciano, his middle name is in memory of Pasquino's brother who was killed when they were kids in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The family moved to Brockton in 1918. Now, Pierino was seven years older than Pasquino. But uh, several people said, hey, these two should meet. One, someone knew Pasquino, someone knew Pierino. These two, we have to get these two together. 
So a house party was planned. The two are at the party. So the story goes, they looked at, looked at each other, they locked eyes, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now that, that's how Rocky's sister Betty, Betty Colombo, explained it to me. They married in 1920. They had six children, three boys, three girls. Now the family initially lived on Brook Street, right, and they almost at the corner of Brook and Winthrop Street, a stone's throw literally from Edgar's playground. Several years after Rocky was born, they moved several hundred feet that way to a house on Dover Street, which again was actually closer than the Brook Street house to James Edgar playground. Now James Edgar playground is where Rocky would spend most of his youth. And James Edgar Playground is where most of all the kids in this whole neighborhood would spend hours and hours playing baseball and football. That is where Rocky honed his skills to be a baseball player, to play football, and to get the stamina that was necessary from running back and forth, playing all these sports that would carry him through all of his fights in the future. When Rocky was born on September 1st, 1923, he was named after his paternal grandfather, Rocco. That was a custom observed by many ethnic groups. The son, the first son is named after the father's father, the first daughter is named after the mother's mother, etc., etc. That's the way they did it in my family as well. These are my uh, ancestors from Italy over here, my great-grandparents and my grandparents. Now, I am 50% Italian, I am 25% English, and I am 25% Irish. This is my 50% Italian, that's my father right there, and this is my English and Irish. This is my grandpa Fred Fuller, this is my grandmother Nana Fuller, and that's my mother Snooky Petty right there, and they're here for her parents. Ali Colombo, Ali Colombo, was a lifelong friend of Rocky's. He was a little bit older than Rocky, but Ali Colombo was always the organizer. He's the one who put things together. He's the one who got games going. He's the one who moved people around and got people introduced to other people. And what Ali Colombo knew, you know what Ali Colombo knew, Tony? He knew that there was something about Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano was a diamond in the rough. And Ali could see it. He knew that Rocky had that, <clears throat> whatever was necessary within him to be a world champion boxer. And Ali did everything that he could to get Rocky connected with the managers and the fight promoters from New York. After World War II, 1946, 1947, Rocky had several amateur fights. But you know who didn't like him fighting? His mother. No, 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 no. God does not want my son to fight. Do not fight. So Rocky and Ali were discussing their futures and after Ali set up some amateur fights, Rocky got a chance for his first professional fight. It was at Holyoke, Mass. He was fighting a guy by the name of Lee Epperson. And Rocky Marciano knocked Lee Epperson out in the third round. But he wasn't Rocky Marciano and he wasn't Rocky Marciano. He was Rocky Marciano M-A-K-K-I-A-N-O from Westover Field so his mother would know that he fought. Well, that was Rocky's first professional fight. Only 48 more to go. As a matter of fact, while Rocky was fighting, his mother, Pastor Molina, did not go to one single fight of his. You know where she went? Every time, Tommy, you're right. 
Every time Rocky fought, Pasquilino went literally right across the street to St. Patrick's Church and prayed for her son's well-being. Every single fight. And you know what? Apparently it worked because Rocky never lost. She prayed awfully hard for him. Now, as Rocky was fighting more and more, Ali Clomo kept writing more and more. Let me go back one second when Rocky was fighting Lee Epperson, his first professional fight. You know what his payday was for that fight? $30. For Rocky's first fight, he made $30. I don't know if that's before or after manager's fees and shower fees or whatever, but it's $30. Right, Tony? Unbelievable. <laughs> now, as Rocky was fighting more and more, Ali Colombo was writing more and more. He wanted to get the promoters and the managers from New York interested in Rocky. By May 2nd, 1949, Rocky Marciano was 16 in all. 16 of those wins, all knockouts. 16 and 0, 16 knockouts. And each and every one of those fights was finished in five rounds or less. What an accomplishment. Finally, in May of 1949, a manager from New York by the name of Al Wilde called Ali Colombo. He said, okay, Ali, Bring this kid to New York. Let's see what we got. The fight promoters and managers were not impressed with Rocky. They actually thought he was a middleweight. He was only 5'10", 185 pounds. While preparing for this evening, I spoke with Rocky's sister Betty, his brother Peter, and his brother-in-law, Armin Colombo. And I asked about their family and Rocky's life. And then I asked Armin Colombo, the legendary high school football coach. I asked him, I said, Armin, what was it that Rocky had that no one else did? And Armin Colombo said to me that Rocky Marciano had the ability to take a punch, but not only take a punch, but his contact with his opponent with one punch, not a flurry of punches, but a single punch that would hurt the person. Many of his fights were won because he would hit people in the arms and their arms would be listless by their side. And Rocky would hit him with a knockout punch. He said that Rocky Marciano would hit him with his right or his left. And that he far exceeded all other fighters. Rocky was that strong and powerful. The New York people soon found out what the Brockton Bach bluster was capable of. Al Weil agreed to become Rocky Marciano's manager. As Rocky continued to fight, his record got better and better. One thing though, one thing, Rocky Marciano's name was extremely difficult to pronounce. Ring announcers, referees, reporters, writers, no one could say his name. So I'm going to ask you. Tell me, read this name for me. Okay, right, say that name for me. 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 See that? Four different people, four different pronunciations. So Al Wilde says to Rocky, we got to do something. we got to make your name a little flashier. 
So Rocky says, what, what are you going to do? So El Wild comes back. He says to Rocky, this is what your new name is going to be. Rocky says, I don't think so. I don't think so. Al, go back to the drawing board. So Al Wild goes back to the drawing board. He says, what can we do with this name? It's got to be flashy. It's got to be easy to say. It has to flow. So Al Will, shortly thereafter, comes back to Rocky. says, hey, what do you think of this right here? I took out the H-E-G, and now it says Marciano. Rocky liked it. He said, I'll go with that. And as they say, the rest is history. He actually came up with the idea to take out the H-E-G. Smart thinking. Rocky was extremely happy. Now, Rocky had 26 fights between May 2nd, 1949, and September 20, and July 12th, 1952. 22 of those fights were won by knockout. The boy with Italian immigrant parents from Brockton, Massachusetts, was finally getting what he had worked for his entire life. A chance to be the heavyweight champion of the world. That chance came against Jersey Joe Walcott on September 23rd, 1952. In the 13th round, at 43 seconds, Rocky Marciano, Brock and Zone, was a heavyweight champion of the world and defended his title six times afterwards. Congratulations, Rocky, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming down to the library. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Excellent. Bill Hogan. Right. Very good. Well, let's just inform me that I'm going to take a question and answer session. So, um, this is Tiger Moore. This is my buddy. This is the guy that I know would make it here sooner or later. $20 to give him the microphone for 20 minutes. Um, I can rescind that if everybody here gives me two bucks a piece and we won't let him talk. I'm only kidding. Um, Tiger, Tiger fought under the Petronelli gym. Um, he was Marvin Hagler's um, main sparring partner during his uh, championship years. And he had a professional career today. Also, Ryder. Um, I'll take questions, but I, you know, I don't know if I can answer too many things, so don't go too far away. I'm not. Uh, I'm he, Tony, yeah, Tony, could you ask Tony some questions too. Um, Tony's got the book too, which is uh, if, you, if you're interested in one. Uh, any anything I can? Uh, no. Uh, um, uh, I would like to know um, who was his six six, six opponents that, that he defended against. Who who did he defend his title against? Yeah. Right here. As it Charles twice. Oh, the stars uh, as a child, Don Cockell, Archie Moore, and Jersey Joe Walcott. As a matter of fact, though, after he fought Jersey Joe Walcott in September of 1952, Jersey, Jersey Joe got a rematch with Rocky, and Rocky knocked him out on the, in the first round on May 15th of 1953. Let me add one more thing here, though. Back in those days, Rocky was fighting two, three, four, one time, even five times in, in, in one, one two-month period. The guy was relentless. He just kept fighting. Wanted to win as much as he could. And uh, yeah, he, so he, those are the uh, those, those are who we challenged. Now, if I'm not fought. mistaken, those out of those, um, as a Charles ended up being, uh, I was the heavyweight champion at one time. Uh, I believe Archie Moore became the heavyweight champion also, and um, of course Jersey Joe 
Uh, Rollo Nostadra, I think you pointed out, he was 37 and 0 in Rocky Beatle. He was in Rocky Beatle, yeah. 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 And this is uh, Rollo right here, I believe. Yeah. And uh, so at, at the end of uh, Rocky's career, he fought, he fought three world champions in the, in the last six fights, yeah. either future or past. <laughs> and there was only one fight, Bill. There was only one time. There was only one time when Rocky Mashana went the distance. And that was against Edgar Charles. He went 15 rounds and he won. Yeah. I'm not going to put the words in his mouth exactly, but he, he basically said, don't, don't schedule as a child again. On the, uh, yeah, I believe <laughs> it. I believe it, yeah. yeah. It, was and then, and it was a tough guy, yeah. yeah. Was, they were good fighters, yeah. 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 Anything else? Um, yeah, way back. Did he get a chance to fight Ali? Or he, was he a big there was a little bit of a, uh, an age difference there, yeah. A couple, if he had hung on, maybe he wanted to fight a few more years. Uh, Rocky had trouble with his back at the end of his career. And um, decided to, to retire. They did fight in a, um, a simulated fight. Um, Rocky won. It was a computer-oriented uh, fight. Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, Rocky died um, before he knew the results of the, uh, the computer fight. Yeah, but he never did get it. That would have been something, that's for sure. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Bally Colombo too a little bit right? because he's yeah. kind of a forgotten hero. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, he was. Matter of fact, up when, when, when you do go to visit the statue up at the high school stadium, there's a plaque next to uh, Rocky's uh, on Rocky's right side. Nice plaque on uh, Ali Colombo. Yeah, Ali Colombo. Yeah. Um, uh, I believe they, they died at the same year, 1969. Yeah. Ali in a truck accident somehow, yeah. and uh, Rocky in the, uh, in the plane crash. Yeah.